We're going to start with the class note 6.2, looking at the periodic table and interpreting the different parts of the periodic table. We'll start with group one, uh, which is the alkali metal. So I have our periodic table here, group one. It is the alkali metal, starting with lithium down to francium. In the book, they refer to this as group 1A. Um, we will typically use the, uh, the numbering system that doesn't have the A's in it, so we will call this group number one, or group one. The alkali metals have very specific characteristics, um, and I have those listed here. I'd like you to copy those into your class notes. So they are soft, shiny, and very reactive metals. They are going to be the most reactive metals on the periodic table. So everything in group one actually reacts very, very strongly, for example, with water, um, and some of them are quite explosive. Um, and you can look up a YouTube video and see sodium, um, pure sodium put into water, pure potassium or rubidium or cesium. And it's pretty impressive reaction that takes place when we put these into water. So they are the most reactive of metals on the periodic table. They're so reactive that in fact, when we have pure metals uh, in the, from the group one, we store those under oil in order to prevent the reaction that they would have with just the water in the air. That's how reactive they are. The next group, group number two, is the alkaline earth metals. So we will refer to that as group two or group two metals or alkaline earth metals. So there's a difference in the naming alkaline earth with these two terms referring to, um, to the second group is different from alkali metals with just this one term referring to it. So first group, alkali metals, group number two, alkaline earth metals. So the alkaline earth metals are also soft and shiny, but they're not quite as soft or easy to cut as the group one metals, um, and they tend to be a little bit less shiny. They're also less reactive than group one metals. And uh, one of the reasons they're called alkaline earth metals is they tend to be very common in the earth's crust. All right. Next set of groups that we're going to discuss are the halogens and noble gases. So take a look at the periodic table. The halogens are here, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and UUS or septium. And the halogens in your book are described as group 7A. You can see that up here. I will typically refer to the halogens as group number 17 or group 17. Okay. So the second to last column on the right side of the periodic table. The last column on the right side of the periodic table is called the noble gases. I'll get to properties of both of these in just a minute, but the noble gases, that's helium all the way down through 118, which is unanoctium. And in your book, they describe these as group number eight. I will refer to these as 18 or group number 18, okay? So what are some of the properties of these? Well, for the halogens, our properties are as follows. They're going to be the most reactive nonmetals on the periodic table. So just like on the other side of the periodic table, group one is the most reactive of metals, these are the most reactive of the nonmetals. Remember, on, we're on the right side of the stair step line. They're going to form what chemists call salts. That's a very generic term for an ionic compound when they react with most metals. And for the halogens, they tend to be fairly colorful elements. Um, and they also are going to be in different states where fluorine and chlorine. Uh, are going to be gases at room temperature. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature and the others are gonna be solids. Now let's talk about the noble gases. The noble gases or group 18 here are called noble gases because they rarely take um, place in chemical reactions. Meaning there are very few compounds that contain a noble gas as one of the atoms. It's really, really uncommon for that to occur. 
And the reason for that is that the noble gases have their highest energy level that is filled with electrons, so they are super stable, okay? Very stable. The full set of electrons for almost all of these is eight valence electrons, and that's kind of what we would refer to as an octet, same noble gas electron configuration for other elements. Okay, we'll get to that uh, in the next chapters or so. And that is that eight for any of the noble gases besides helium. Helium's a little bit special here in that helium is stable with a filled set of valence electrons with only two valence electrons. And the reason for that is its outer shell is the first energy level and that can only hold two electrons and helium has those two valence electrons. The next part of the class notes that we're going to talk about is um, some of these larger groups that encompass multiple parts of the periodic table. So the first of those we call the representative elements. For the representative elements, those are described as the A group. So 1A all the way through um, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, and to 7A, okay? So it's these first two groups of the periodic table, and then these first five groups in the P block. If we're talking about the one through 18 numbering system, then it's groups one and two, and then 13 through 17 over here. Um, let's talk about some of the um, then transition metals, um, and we'll get to the properties in just a little bit. So for transition metals, that's the B groups. Those are this part of the periodic table. Um, and if we're talking about the numbered system, then that is group B, or sorry, group three through group 12. And you can see that that is actually encompassing what we call the D block of the periodic table. The inner transition metals are going to be the F block. Remember, that's these lower two rows that actually would be placed here and split the periodic table, but for convenience, we put them below. So those are called the inner transition metals, and that's the F blocks. So let's talk about the properties associated with each of these different ones. For the representative group, uh, as we would expect, these display a wide range of properties. Those properties go all the way from metals and our alkali metals on the left, very reactive metals, all the way through to nonmetals on the right side. One thing that is characteristic, though, is that for each of these, the highest energy level is not full of electrons. It's progressing toward the noble gases, but none of them have a stable and full set of electrons. For the transition metals, remember those are the D block elements, okay? These are metals with their final electrons placed in the D orbitals, and that's going to give particular characteristics to these types of elements. That's the transition metals. Now the inner transition metals, those are the ones that would actually split open the D block and separate it even further. So that's why we call them the inner transition metals even though those are the metals that are below the periodic table in the way that we view it, called the F block. So these are metals with their final electrons placed in the F orbitals. Many of these are synthetic, as shown by the kind of gray coloring that we have um, for these types of elements to indicate synthetic. And most of them are radioactive. So being synthetic means that they are not found in nature, but made by super colliders or radioactive decay or something like that. Um, being radioactive means that their nuclei are not stable. And that would be characteristic of these very, very large types of elements um, that are beyond the stable number of protons and neutrons. And so they will undergo decay. So many of them are radioactive. Let's go on now to just a general description of our groups. And that's over here. Sorry, the blocks, if we're referring to the blocks of the periodic table, we can talk about the S block. Remember, that would be the left side of the periodic table, these first two columns over here. 
that's groups one and two. And remember, it also includes helium, which as far as electron configuration goes, we actually consider helium to be over here. So groups one and two and helium are the S block. The P block is going to be this side of the periodic table over here. And that will include groups 13 through 18, but without helium. When I refer to the P block, I would be saying here, but helium is actually over in the S block. The D block, these are groups three through 13. So that's gonna be this central part of the periodic table. Okay, that middle set of uh, elements between the S and the P block, groups three through 12. And then the F block is not technically groups. Um, it's actually these two rows that we show at the bottom of the periodic table. Again, things that actually um, would split the periodic table in the transition metals.